What's up guys, Blitz here today bringing you another video. In today's video, there's a big topic you guys have been asking me to acknowledge for quite some time in regards to Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 2. So in this video, we're going to be talking about them while adding some more elements that I would love to see in Final Fantasy VII Part 2. One of the biggest questions are and what I think will happen with our progress from Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 1 when we start Part 2. Definitely a good question and I have opinions on where it may or may not go. Spoiler warnings for those who have not played and beaten Remake Part 1 because we will be talking about things in regards to Remake Part 2 as well and the original Final Fantasy 7. Just wanted to make sure you guys are aware and now with all that being said, let's get into this video. Final Fantasy 7 Remake Part 1 ends with the party getting ready to leave Midgar. In the original game, it wasn't really a big event as it was in Remake. I mean, aside from the roller boss, we got a crazy standoff against Fate Gods and a weaker Sephiroth clone. Yeah, I'm still not convinced that's actually Sephiroth, guys. But after all of that, the party is looking towards the open horizons and begins making their journey towards the town known as Calm. So a lot of people are wondering, so what now happens to all of our progress? Our levels, our materia, the equipment, our gill. We ended our first normal run of the game around level 38 or 40. Then for hard mode, we eventually capped out the levels at 50 and mastered all of our materials. None of us can say for sure what exactly Square will do in regards to part two, but I think they definitely will limit what carries over. First things first, the levels. There are two ways that they can go about this, but whatever they decide to do has to set the tone for the rest of Remake's remaining parts. This first one is not what I want, but I will be detailing multiple methods that they can go about. If we start back at level 50, then the overall level cap would probably exceed past level 99, maybe making 150 the true level cap for the series, or if we get 4 parts total, maybe we'll see level 200 be the cap. Who knows? The stats as far as damage goes would have to be toned down for sure. Plain and simple, we can't come off having Sephiroth tank 6,000 damage hits and then move on to squirrels and little pieces of grass tanking 7,000 damage hits. This would be like what MMOs do after a few expansions such as in World of Warcraft where it gets to a certain point where characters would hit over 1 million damage per a basic attack and 10 million damage for an ability. So they normalized it and did sort of a damage crunch on the stats as well. Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 2 could very well follow that with keeping us at level 50. But what I would prefer for them to do is to bite the bullet and just drop us down to level 15 or 16 to start off Part 2. This is the average level where most players were in the original game when the party left Midgar. Part 1 started off with Cloud at the edge of level 6 and then he hit level 7 during our first battle in the bombing mission run, exactly like what happened in the original game. I wouldn't put it past them to bring something of that sort into this game, this way they don't have to go through the whole trouble of redoing stats and crunching numbers down either, but that's just how I feel about the levels and stats and how they should be done for Remake Part 2. The other stats that Square most definitely will be hoping to make adjustments to are that only 21.5% of people that watch and enjoy these videos every day are currently subscribed. Guys, hit that subscribe button, it's totally free and is an awesome way to help support the channel and content that you all love. Being a subscriber will make sure that you get first dibs on notifications from all of our content and keep you informed on our Final Fantasy streams. Right now, we are going to be finishing up Final Fantasy VI this Friday, so you definitely don't want to miss out on that one, guys. You know, a Final Fantasy VII fanboy's first time with Final Fantasy VI is often said to be a special one. I think Kefka said that, right? And now for the materia. At the end of Remake, all of our materia was mastered, and I mean, we had Aga spells out the ass. Whereas in the original game, it's not until you leave Midgar where your material levels up once for the very first time. And you have Fyra, Blizzara, or Thundara, or as Final Fantasy VII original called them, Fire 2, Ice 2, and Thunder 2. So it's safe to say the material levels and damage were hella increased in Remake, and now going forward, if they keep us at level 50 and sync damage stats, I can see them extending magic spells to go even further by adding more levels to them. So from Fire, Fyra, and Fyraga, I could see a Fyraja or maybe even newer iterations to the spells that other Final Fantasies have done. Or they could go a route that I've been speculating on for quite some time where the materia that we got from Chadley, Shinra, and all throughout Midgar and Remake Part 1 are all synthetic man-made materia which are not as powerful and potent as actual livestream Mako infused real-world materia. This could be the case for summons, I personally believe. This would cause the materia to break once outside of Midgar or not function as properly when compared to materia that say for example Red 13 has from Cosmo Canyon. Maybe the gang heads to the nearest materia shop and buys a whole entire new set. I don't know, but I could see them doing that for part 2, making it so that we have to sort of start fresh in a way. 
but letting us keep certain materials such as Chakra, Prayer, and select few others. As you guys know, I hope they remove most of the purple materials from ATB Assist, Skill Master, Parry, and Deadly Dodge, but instead make them into passive abilities for characters to equip. But what I truly think will happen in regards to materia are that we keep most of the materia, but they are reduced to level 1, and we lose some of the other ones and start off with more of a basic list. Because if we start off with maxed out materials, it could stray further away from an RPG feel with us just being super overpowered right out the gates. Which personally, I don't want. I want to be able to feel a growth, so to speak, which is another thing I hope they execute very well. Because anytime my characters leveled up, it didn't really feel as exciting or as engaging as it did back in the day. Obviously, with a new interface and it being an action-based game, this is to be expected. But I would love if they could put a little bit more work into the leveling and stat increase aspect of things, too. There is also the high possibility that Yuffie appears before the party much earlier than we originally meet her. In the original game, after the Mithril Caves. What if she and the party are leaving Midgar simultaneously and she robs them? Then the beginning portions of Remake Part 2 consists of us trying to get our stuff back and all of us jumping the shit out of her. <laughs> I know this is a popular theory from way back when, and now Yuffie's DLC sort of can give us more light towards that idea depending on how they decide to end her DLC. We will be seeing this hopefully in June. And now for the equipment. I think we will keep all of our weapons, armor, and accessories outside of a few and well just one broken accessory the ragnarok sorry i am not pronouncing this shit anymore because you guys keep making fun of me for butchering it <laughs> but the ragnarok is an absolutely fun and broken accessory that completely changes the way that you play remake also check out our instant limit break build so you can get two ragnaroks in remake the training room in chapter 17 to me is filler content that doesn't affect the story, so all the battles there and accessories we gain won't be returning to Remake Part 2, especially in the beginning where we would just be steamrolling everything in our path. I can totally see it being a thing that we can unlock at the end game to enjoy clapping everything with, but to start off the game with, I just don't see it. It's going to be one of those things that won't carry over with our save file, so to speak. I absolutely love the way that the weapons and abilities were done in Remake Part 1, and I hope they continue to add more and do not remove any of which they've already implemented. This will give us so many unique playstyles and variety when it comes to builds too. As you guys know, is a very big deal for me personally. That's one of the biggest things I loved about the first game. And now when it comes to our gill, let's be honest, after hard mode and all the grinding that most of us did, I doubt they will let us carry over the full amount. Granted, gill felt sort of useless after a certain point in Remake, and to be honest, that is the case for many RPGs, it's just one of those things that happens at the end game. But I would love if in Remake Part 2 we retain maybe 100,000 gill max, and there are more stores and more reasons to spend our gill on to make purchases retain value in a sense. Things such as better weapons, more pricier materia, spending guild to open materia loadouts, chocobo racing and breeding, all that stuff can give great meaning to earning and saving up your guild, I believe. Because as it stands right now, most players have currently over 2 million guild, and I don't see that carrying over unless they want to increase the value of items inside of Remake Part 2. But then, there would be a balancing issue with people just grinding gill and money easily in Remake Part 1, then loading up the save file in Remake Part 2 to get crazy money overall. So I don't think that's going to happen to be honest. The same could be said for our items as well. Since we did not really use our items in hard mode, we have tons of inventory just stockpiled up waiting to be used. But a lot of us may have 99 elixirs, which again is pretty broken to have transferred over to start off Remake Part 2. So I can see them letting us keep maybe 25 of each item that we had to carry over that threshold. So, to put it into perspective, I think that when it comes to our progress for Remake Part 2, we will have our levels drop back to level 15 or so to match the original game setting. We will also have a select few materia carry over, but all will be returned back to level 1 for the sake of grinding. The RPG player's pastime, you know what I mean? And for equipment and accessories, we will keep almost everything except the Ragnarok because, let's face it, it's pretty broken and turns the game into an easy mode essentially. And also with our gill and items, we could retain a certain amount, but not the full amount as that would be a non-RPG experience with no room for grinding really, which for me is a big deal in many ways. I am hopeful that the open world or zoned world they decide to implement into Remake will provide many RPG enthusiasts that feeling they so crave and remember from the original game. But even so, if they do change it up and add something new or take many things away, I'm sure the overall game experience will be just fine for the newer or average player, whatever Square decides to do. 
I'm sure some of these ideas are definitely within their thought process. I personally cannot see them executing or going about this in any other way than we've mentioned above. Let me know in the comments below what ideas or ways you think they'll go about it for the progress to carry over. And that wraps it up for this video, guys. Some big news Thursday, April 1st at 9 p.m. Eastern and 6 p.m. Pacific time. And no, it's not an April Fool's joke. I will be attending a podcast stream with Baby Seal and Sleep Easy, two big theorists from the Final Fantasy VII community. Many of you guys have already seen most of their work, so shout outs to Baby Seal for reaching out to me on this opportunity, and I can't wait to sit down and chat with Sleep Easy too. This discussion will be live streamed via Baby Seal's Twitch channel, so be sure to tune in and follow while leaving some comments in the live chat to join along in the discussion, guys. A lot of you guys have been asking me about the progress situation for Remake Part 1 when we get to Remake Part 2, and I'm happy to finally get some time to lay it all out there in one dedicated video. We've talked about this on stream many times before, but it's just one of those questions that always comes back into the fold, simply because we all want to know whether or not we should 100% remake part 1 and unlock everything in order to carry it over into remake part 2. I love to see so many things carried over for remake part 1, but I don't see that being the case because a lot of those items and things could just break the way that remake part 2 would function initially, so I don't see them making all that into the fold. But I'm excited to hear what you guys think about these. Yuffie playing a part in losing our materials is an easy route that they can take with it, but in Remake anything is possible because they don't seem to feel the need to stay constrained to the original game's exact plotline and story. So it's going to be exciting to see how all these things work out and just what direction they decide to go in. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe if you are new. More Final Fantasy VII Remake videos are coming your way and you won't want to miss them. My name is Blitz and thanks for watching.